want to know what's going on in the Bronx? Are you interested in Bronx politics, sports, and entertainment? Are you interested in Bronx personalities? Do you want to keep up with the latest business or cultural trends? In the Bronx Journal, we have the answers. Now here's your host, the Bronx Journal's Editor-in-Chief, Professor Miguel Perez. So where do the children go after school? Who's there to take care of them? Uh, Griselda Esteves from the Committee for Hispanic Children and Families uh, is here to tell us all about that here in the Bronx. She's the site coordinator for an after school program at PS59. Welcome to the program. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure having you here. Thank tell you. us all about the, f uh, the, uh, the committee and what it does in this after school program. So I understand it's four schools, right? Yes, all in the Bronx. Um, the Committee for Hispanic Children and Families has four after school programs all located in the Bronx. My site is PS59, which is an elementary school from kindergarten to fifth grade. Uh, and we offer the programs for K th through fifth as well. The other schools, we have a school that uh, offers uh, the program to elementary and middle school. So it goes from K through eighth here in the Bronx, 279. So and what happens in this program? What happens after school? Uh, we help the students with homework help. So we. Um, Allo uh, allocate a time to do the um, homework help with them uh, where the group leaders assist them with their assignments for that day and then they go to different activities including arts and craft, health and fitness and um, newsletters. They are creating their own newsletters so it's different activities. And how long do you keep them? From three to six. Okay and how long has this program been around? How, why was it necessary? Uh, the program at PS59 started in 2000, so this is going to be its eighth year. And um, the need for after school, it's major, not only in the Bronx, but across the city, because between the hours of three to six is the time where the more crimes are committed by um, juvenile crime and where kids uh, go home um, by themselves because the parents are working and there's nobody else to take care of them. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so necessary to have after school program because the after school program, they don't need to go out of the school. They stay inside their own school and the parents pick them up at six o'clock after their work day. Mm -hmm. So it really alleviates the situation for a lot of parents who would need a babysitter uh, to take care of the child Absolutely. after school. Absolutely. The program is uh, completely free. That's what, what was my next question. Do yeah. they have to pay anything? No, absolutely. No. Uh, the program is offered to all students in the school uh, and it's free for all students. Mm -hmm. So, but only these four schools, okay, for now? For the Committee for Hispanic Children and Families, but there are a number of after school programs uh, run by com uh, community based programs, uh, mm -hmm. organizations. Okay, and why is that necessary? Why is it run by community based programs? Because the schools don't have the funding exactly. to con conduct uh, after and school programs? Exactly, and it offers also um, another set of uh, values and staff that comes from the community so the kids are engaged with other adults other than the teachers and these are role models for them. Mm -hmm. So most of the staff in our programs are college students that the kids really look up to them and look, see them as role models for, for them and, and can offer them a whole other world um, with the teachers of course during the day but the group leaders are um, college students, community members that um, are usually role models for these kids. Mm -hmm. So the community organizations get involved with the public schools yes. to provide these programs. Yes. Uh, why, how do they, where does the money come from? What are they, how is the money raised to pay for the staff? Yes, we have, um, in our school specifically, we have three different grants. So we get the 21st century grant, which is an, a federal grant. Uh, we get the Advantage grant, and we get money from uh, the city council. Okay, and then uh, how big is the program in these four schools? How many, how much staff, staffing do you have? In uh, specifically at PS59, we have 200 students and we have 25 wow. staff. 25 staff members? Yes. With 25 uh, students after school every day? No, uh, it's a ratio of 1 to 10. So in a group of 20 kids, you will have two adults. 
Wow, that's that's very good. Yes. That's very good. Now, what happens there? In a minute, we're gonna we're gonna look at some pictures that, yes. that you brought of the different activities. But just give me a rundown of the kind of activities well, the that they have before we look at the pictures. Yes, sure. The kids come down to the cafeteria after their regular dismissal time, where they have supper, and this is an important mm. part of the day because is that free also? Yes, and as we wow. all know, some of these kids go home and they don't have anything to eat at night. So that's why we offer hot suppers for them every day from Monday to Friday. And then after snack, they go up to their assigned classroom. We have them in classrooms per group, per grade, um, usually 20 um, students per group, usually less, um, 15 to 20 students, I would say. Uh, the first activity is usually homework help, where they have 45 minutes of uh, a to complete their homework. Sometimes this, this time it's not enough, but in most cases it's enough time for them to finish their work for that day. So and when you say homework help, you don't actually help them do the homework, no. you assist them. Assist them. them. In, uh, you make them do the homework. Exactly. The, otherwise and, and you say this is your time to complete your homework exactly. assignment. Exactly. And the group leaders are there to provide assistance. We provide them with the materials that they need, for example, dictionaries, pencils, Sharpeners, the, the smallest thing that you would think that a child will need for homework, it's mm -hmm. there for them. And the group leaders are there to make sure that they use that time wisely. Mm -hmm. And there's no excuse then when they get home and say, okay, I didn't have time to do my homework. You created a time for them. Exactly, exactly. And we can, um, in, at PS59, we have a very open communication with the teachers. So we usually know when the kids don't have homework and because they will come and say, oh, we don't have homework today, but we actually have a communication with the teachers, so we will know if they have homework or they don't have homework. I should try that with some of my students here <laughs> at Lehman College. Uh, but, you know, tell me about the parents. How, the, how do they become involved in the program? Uh, actually, uh, the parents are very involved in our programs. We have um, shows, t we have two shows during the year, and the parents are welcome to participate um, assist us and volunteer during the program rehearsals and they help uh, they help us actually in the same day of the show uh, getting the kids ready and they also can participate in our program we have a family literacy program on saturdays where the parents and the kids come together to create a book together during the saturday so the, the parents also become the students uh, yes. Wow. yes but actually they come they become their own author and illustrators for their own books hmm. with their kids Interesting. So, uh, is there any language f a factor here uh, with the parents being Hispanic, many of them, yes. and many of them maybe not be able to speak English well, and yes. may not be able to teach the uh, child or help exactly. the child with the homework? And that's one. How, how that's does that happen? Yes, and that's when our group leaders, most of them, speak Spanish, mm -hmm. and that's when we have a communication with the parents. Some of the parents come to us and tell us, can you please help my child with their English assignment, with their reading, because I don't speak English and I cannot help them at home. And that's, when, that's why when I said um, that we make sure that they take that time and use it wisely that's when we say if a group leader knows that uh, a parent do not speak English they make sure that that child finish their reading homework first instead of the math where the parent if they don't finish they could help them at home mm. what kind of feedback do you get from the parents what do they say to you you know are they grateful I imagine they're very grateful for they're very grateful and we hear a lot of stories where the parents I actually, one of my favorite stories is what, when a parent came up to me and said, what do you do to my child? This was a, a, a fifth grader, a girl, fifth grader, that used to hate reading. And um, her mother came up to me one day and she said, what did you do to her? I was like, what did we do to her? And she was like, she used to hate reading and now she's reading to her little brother. And, and that, to me, was... It meant the world, the world to me because that's exactly what we want to, to do to this so, kids. So what happens after school eventually actually promotes what happens during school. Absolutely. It actually Absolutely. trains them better to get a better education? Absolutely. Our mission for the uh, Renaissance after school program at PS59, it's to nurture the, the academics of the kids through arts and recreational activities mm -hmm. in a safe, engaging and mature environment. That's our mission. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that is uh, often missing from public schools nowadays is the arts, is the music. It, th those things have been cut back with the uh, budget cutbacks to the point where they're non-existent nowadays. So it's very important to bring them back even after school. And absolutely. And, and because they're doing an art project doesn't mean that they're not learning. They're mm -hmm. always learning. And anything that you do with a child, there's always something to learn. It's, there's something that they could learn and take back and say during the school day, oh, this is what we did in after school. 
Okay, so listen, we're very glad that you're here, and as soon as we come back, we're going to take a quick break, but as soon as we come back, Griselda is going to show some of the pictures that she brought. From, we're going to actually see some of the students in some of these activities that are, that are occurring here in the Bronx, and actually, frankly, we're very proud to see that this is happening. Thank you. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 